Today I'm going to review the drop enter keyboard and to be precise the Lord of the Rings Dwarven enter keyboard. As the name suggests it's a keyboard meant for newbies entering the magical world of mechanical keyboard for the first time so yeah I'm not expecting too much. As you may know I designed the keycaps but I have nothing to do with the development of the keyboard itself. This is a 100% drop initiative. Uh, they just slapped my keycaps uh, over it. Before I begin, a mandatory introduction for those who don't know me and don't know how I uh, make reviews. Uh, what I'm offering you is the most honest, unfiltered, unbiased opinion. I'm not trying to tell you if this keyboard is right for you, but more if uh, I would recommend it to a friend. So if you are easily offended by others' opinion or uh, if you have a strong brand loyalty, in this case to drop, uh, well, I'm afraid that you are going to be disappointed and I'm sure you will show me your anger in the comments. So with that out of the way, let's do some unboxing. Very nice design. I love the Middle Earth uh, map. It gives me that warm and fuzzy feeling. Let's see what's inside. Nice black box with minimal branding. And here it is. Uh, the packaging is all cardboard, except for the foam to protect the keyboard. The keycaps are, of course, gorgeous. Let's see. Ah, the instructions. Initial start up. The USB-C port on the Enter can be used to connect your keyboard to your computer. No shit. The keyboard should work out of the box should work, they are playing it safe, should work out of the box with macOS and Windows operating systems. F and keys work with Windows operating system only. I am using it on Linux and it has absolutely no problem. Very good. Layout of the function layer and let's see what's inside. Uh, we have the famous USB-C cable and a key puller and some additional keycaps. Okay, I replaced the escape key and I'm going to also replace the enter key. Uh, I wanted to show you the uh, switches and stabilizer first. Uh, the switches are uh, Holy Panda X and the stabilizers are uh, Phantom stabilizers. They are plate mounted. Um, I think it is a good choice. I uh, generally like the, the, the feel of, of uh, plate mounted stabilizers, even though they are less um, flexible, especially for um, custom keyboards. The Holy Panda X are actually nice uh, switches. Uh, they are tactile. Uh, they have a very strong uh, tactile feeling and, and the stiffness is uh, pretty good. So I think they made a good choice for a starter uh, mechanical keyboard. Let's put the enter key back. And indeed the stabilizers work really well. I'm going to do a sound test in a moment. Uh, before that, a quick note about the Legends. Every time we release a Tolkien keyboard, someone says that the Legends are wrong and that the letters don't match the sound of the symbols. That is true, but there's a reason for that. First of all, it would be extremely difficult to make a phonetic keyboard. We simply don't have enough keys and we don't have enough uh, sounds. Uh, but most importantly, the keycaps are meant for writing in Dwarvish. They are not just for show. There are a couple of standards for writing Kit and Tangwar. My keycaps follow the standard invented by Daniel Smith. 
It means that if you install Daniel Smith's font or any font that follows uh, his standard, you are actually able to write in Dwarvish. A phonetic keyboard would be nice and all, but would be just for show. And of course, we don't want that. Check my videos. Uh, I made a tutorial on how to write in Elvish and that concept works for Darvish too. Uh, hopefully this is the last time I have to say this. And now the sound test. So the sound is surprisingly uniform along the whole keyboard, but it's plasticky and feels a little cheap. Uh, the bottom is made of uh, aluminium, but uh, I expect it to be a pretty thin, uh, while the top cover is just plastic. So that might explain why the keyboard sounds uh, a little hollow. I'm going to open the keyboard in a moment and see if uh, we can get to the source of the problem. Uh, the Enter has other features like uh, the backlight, uh, no RGB, just white backlight. And to be honest, uh, it's not very bright. This is the maximum brightness. It has a very limited uh, function layer, mostly in the F row, uh, you access it with uh, this key here. But honestly, I don't see anything that justifies uh, the premium uh, price that they are asking for the keyboard. Anyway, I'm removing the keycaps and try to disassemble this thing to see what's inside. Okay, this is as far as I can go disassembling the keyboard. The PCB has a very simple design and it's pretty clean, much cleaner than a Logitech that I recently reviewed. But uh, inside I found a piece of loose solder. I don't know if you can see it here, which is not uh, reassuring. And uh, I would say that 90% of the solder points are uh, a little too cold, so I suspect they are done in a bit of a hurry. The MCU here uh, is unknown, probably something custom uh, that the manufacturer uses. The problem, though, is uh, the bottom of the case. Uh, the aluminum tray is very thin, about 1.5 millimeter. Uh, then they added this plastic structure. Uh, that is where the PCB and the plate are actually uh, screwed to. And the problem is that the plastic is held onto the metal just with uh, double tape. Uh, you can see it here and here. So the bond is not very strong and you can see here that the plastic is actually moving and making noise. Uh, so um, this is probably why this keyboard uh, doesn't uh, sound and feel uh, that great. I believe they wanted to use aluminium for the case because otherwise uh, it would have looked uh, like a cheap product 
uh, while they wanted uh, a, a premium uh, keyboard. The problem is that they had to add all these layers held together with double tape. And I believe that if the keyboard was all plastic, it would have been better. This hybrid makes a little sense, at least uh, made like this. To validate my hypothesis, I'm going to make some modifications to the case and see if uh, we can make it a little better. Uh, before doing that, though, uh, I did some research and found a very interesting keyboard from uh, Xiaomi uh, that has a PCB design that is suspiciously similar to this one. Uh, the traces are designed in the same way. The uh, MCU is the same and it even has the same hand-drawn marking on the PCB here. The difference is that the Xiaomi is a $30 keyboard, uh, while Drops is a $200 keyboard. Uh, of course, the economy of scale is very different. The Drop keyboard is a niche item, uh, but anyway, it helps uh, to give us an idea of the actual value of this thing. So modifications. I'm going to try to remove uh, the tape and replace it with a uh, contact glue. Contact glue should give a better bond between uh, plastic and metal, and hopefully will also work as a bit of a gasket and absorb some of the uh, vibration while typing. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, the keyboard is back together. I didn't put the top plastic frame on because honestly, it's pointless. All I have to do is to put the keycaps back. My wife always wants to do that, so I'm leaving that to her. first glance it seems to be slightly better but uh, let's do a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison Well, what can I say? Wow, I didn't really expect such a difference. Uh, that proves to me that with just a little more attention to details and maybe a little better testing, Drop could have drastically improved the Enter keyboard. The switches are good, the stabilizers are good, the keycaps are good, but you can't put good things on top of a terrible structure and hope for the better. So, conclusions. Would I recommend the Dwarvish Enter keyboard to a friend? Well, no, not at this price point. It could be fine at $99, but $170 is hard to swallow. If you are a Lord of the Rings fan and you don't care about keyboards, well, uh, you decide. 
if it's worth your money. All I can tell you is that it's overpriced, but that it's true for every officially licensed product. Uh, if you are a mechanical keyboard enthusiast who happens to also be a Tolkien fan, well, I don't need to tell you what to do with this keyboard. But I have a suggestion for both of you. Instead of this keyboard, uh, buy the Dwarvish keycaps, maybe when they are on sale, and put them on any half-decent keyboard. The result will be a million times better, and probably you would even save some money. So yeah, hope this video was of any help. Uh, it's all for now. See you next time. Ciao. My god, this thing pings like hell. Should I tell them? I am already going to destroy this keyboard.